Hey there, this is Andrew bringing you another Keyforge deck review. This is going to be a Worlds Collide deck. And uh, as I'm recording this, it is uh, it's pretty close to release. Uh, I'm recording this on Tuesday night and the release is this th uh, Friday. And uh, I probably won't publish this until like the day before and uh, save the last one I have queued up for day of and then uh, the day after I'm going to a sealed store champs so I'll just have these queued up for a while I guess um, cool so this one is Logos and Sarian and Star Alliance. Ooh, that is a that that's a fun looking combo. Um, so out of Star Alliance and Logos both, I'm looking for things that'll just speed my deck up, uh, make things fast, accelerate, enable. Uh, there's a little bit of control in both of those two that can happen. Uh, and then in Sarian, I'm hoping for good board control effects, uh, some strong amber generation hopefully, and maybe crazy crazy uh, shenanigans with amber control. Uh, this is Mile K. Chemoas, hmm. and you know, ooh, this was easier before I cut my nails. You gotta do what you gotta do. I keep them pretty short. All right. So my LK Moas. I think what goes first here. I think Logos comes first. And we'll start with Ooh, Edi Eddie Four by Four is a three power AI scientist. When you play it, you archive a card, and your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each card in your archives. Uh, that's a pretty fun one. We got two of those, uh, which is amazing. If you play, you know, two of these on one turn, you've archived two cards, and your opponent's keys will now cost four more as long as these are on the board, right? Because they're each increasing the cost by two. I'll, I always love to see some Igor. Igor is a two-power cyborg with the play effect. Look at the top three cards of your deck, add one to your hand, and discard the others. Hapsis is a five power mutant scientist. After an enemy creature is destroyed, fighting Hapsis, ward Hapsis, and draw a card. Oh, information exchange is great. It's an action. When you play it, you steal one, and if your opponent stole one from you, stole amber from you on their previous turn, you steal two instead. That can be really nice. Really good shadows hate. Tau Tau Vapors is a, another good deck accelerant is an action, you draw two cards and you archive a card. That could go really well with the EDs. However you say those. <laughs> Titan Guardian is a five power beast and cyborg with one armor. It has taunt and destroyed. If Titan Guardian is not on a flank, draw two cards. That's very good. Ah, Wild Wormhole, always fun. Gain an amber, play the top card of your deck. Oh, Discombobulator. It's an upgrade with a bonus amber, and it gives the creature it's attached to your amber cannot be stolen. Really nice. Dr. Millie is a two-power scientist, and for each creature your opponent controls in excess of you, not counting Dr. Mil uh, Dr. Millie, archive a card. That is potentially very, very good with the, with the Edies. I'm worried it won't be as good with the Saurians. But we don't have a ton of creatures here in Logos so far. So this could be relatively creature light, in which case that's going to fire. Uh, but you know, even if you archive one with it, that's pretty good. Positron Bolt is uh, back from Call of the Archons. It is an action with a bonus amber. You deal three damage to a flank creature, two damage to its neighbor, and one damage to the second creature's other neighbor. So it goes three, two, one, going in from a flank. Uh, that's a, I love that. I love seeing that. 
And then we have Seismo Entangler, which is back from Age of Ascension. It's an artifact and item. Uh, it can exhaust to choose a house, and during your opponent's next turn, creatures of the chosen house cannot be used to reap. That's some of that uh, Logos control. Uh, so yeah, what are we looking for here? Well, we have good steel hate, right? We have Discombobulator that says you can't steal. We have Information Exchange that punishes the opponent if they did steal. And then we have Deck Accelerants in the form of cards like Igor. Perhaps this is a little bit of board control as well as, you know, drawing. Tau Tau Vapors is good for accelerating the deck. So is Edie, and Edie also increases key cost. So uh, we can get some good value out of that. Probably want to keep the cards in archives, hold out as long as we can to get the value out of that, as long as it's on the board. Uh, Wild Wormhole gets us through fast. Titan Guardian can protect a, a creature like, like the EDs, and, as well as then giving us a bonus when it dies. So uh, really great stuff there. All right. On to Saurians. We have Brutadon Auxiliary. This is a 6 power beast with Taunt and Hazardous 2. It's just a really solid way to protect stuff. Aha! Imperial Scutum is an upgrade with a bonus amber and it gives a creature plus 2 armor and destroyed move each amber on this creature to the common supply. So obviously that doesn't trigger if the creature leaves the board in some other way. Uh, but I'm hoping we get a little bit of ward in Star Alliance, which will help potentially keep protect creatures from leaving the board in weird ways um, if we have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, this is just a great way to make to turn a capture into Amber Burn, essentially. And if we end up with a card like Senator Shrix, where we get benefits from having uh, from exalting or capturing onto a creature. Uh, this is a good way to mitigate the risk of that. Imperium, great. This is an action with the bonus amber. When you play it, you ward two friendly creatures. Really helpful. Odoak the Patrician, more steel hate. It's a five-powered dinosaur and politician. When you play it, it captures one amber, and while it has amber on it, your amber can't be stolen. This is a good ward target, along with the Edies. Aha, Phalanx Strike is an action with a bonus amber. When you play it, you choose a creature, you deal one damage to it for each friendly creature, and you can exalt a friendly creature to repeat the preceding effect. And again, if you exalt a creature with uh, Imperial Scutum on it, that mitigates the risk substantially. So yeah, that's uh, very promising. We have two of those. And Prefectus Ludo does, uh, does even more for us here. He's a 5 power dinosaur and politician, and each other friendly creature gains destroyed, move each amber on this creature to the common supply. So, as long as he's out, the creature gets destroyed, the amber gets lost instead of going back to your opponent. And we did get a Senator Shrix as well. This is fantastic. So Senator Shrix is a 4 power dinosaur and politician with an armor, and you can spend amber on Senator Shrix as if it were in your pool, and when you play uh, Senator Shrix or Reap with it, you may exalt it. So what that does effectively is let you, uh, you know, when you play it, that any amber that you put on this is potentially something that you can spend. Now, uh, the opponent, your opponent can kill Senator Shrix and then it goes to them instead, but with cards like Ludo, Scutum, it makes it less likely, uh, you know, even if they kill the Shrix, the amber is lost instead of going to your opponent, uh, which mitigates that downside. And with uh, cards like uh, Imperium, we have ways to, you know, we can ward Senator Shrix, making him more likely to stay on the board. Uh, and that turns, you know, that turns him into a real huge amber generator. And even, even better, the, the amber on him just isn't eligible to be stolen or even captured. Uh, like I said, we have some good steel hate, but uh, it can't be captured either. Uh, and, you know, you can take cards like Phalanx Strike that are normally the exalt is a downside, but if you are killing enemy creatures and then putting more amber on Senator Shrix, which you can then spend to make keys, uh, it mitigates the downside. So this is a great card to have. That There's a lot of synergy there. I would have been happy to see another one, but that's okay. We instead got Tricerian Legionary, who's a 5 power, 1 armor, 
Dinosaur Soldier with Taunt, and when you play it, you ward a friendly creature. This is another ward effect, another taunt effect. Good ways to, again, protect the Shrix if that's what we want, or other things as well. Really great. We have two of those. That's four taunt creatures in here, and four wards that we've seen so far. Whew. And then we have Ancient Power, which is an action with a bonus amber. When you play it, you ward each friendly creature with amber on it, which... You know, right now, I, ideally, I just want that to be Shrix and Odoac, right? Because they have good effects for having Amber on them. Uh, probably that'll only affect them at this point, but it's still very excellent there. Uh, and we could potentially get more interesting synergy in Star Alliance. Ha! We get Sorry About That, which is uh, an action that... When you play it, you destroy a creature, and its controller gains an amber. That's pretty interesting. Uh, why would you want this card? Well, sometimes being able to just hard destroy an enemy creature can be quite good, uh, even worth giving your opponent an amber, but also if you do this to one of your own creatures, uh, gaining an amber is not bad, and there are some creatures where it might make sense to do it, right? Like, maybe you decide, yeah, I have Ludo out, I can, I just captured three onto Odoac, I'll kill it, and the Amber will get burnt instead of, uh, instead of going back to my opponent, so, and I'll gain an Amber, so that could be good. Uh, you know, killing the Titan Guardian wouldn't be a terrible move under the right circumstances. Uh, that's probably, you know, even, um, if you have something warded, Killing it is not bad. So, uh, oh, I didn't even re think about the fact that some of those ward effects are really cool with the Hapsis because we can potentially get a ward on the Hapsis before it does its first fight, which means it could even, you know, right off the bat hit something that's, that is worth five and kill it and reward itself and draw you a card. Uh, yeah, which is really great. Okay, let's look at Star Alliance. We have Arms Master Melina. She's a 4 power human with Hazardous 3, and she gives each of her neighbors Hazardous 3 as well. That is uh, potentially really good with some of these taunt creatures, really good for things like Shrix that you maybe just want to keep your opponent from wanting to touch. Uh, seems pretty good. Chief Engineer Walls is a 2 power human with Elusive. After you play, fight, or reap, Chief Engineer Walls, you may return an upgrade or robot card from your discard pile to your hand. Uh, so far, let's see, in terms of robots, we've seen... Oh, do we have any robots in Logos? I don't think we do. Yeah, we didn't get any robots in Logos, but we did get... Uh, we did get a good upgrade in the Discombobulator. So that could potentially be worth bringing back. Uh, we have, you know, Imperial Scutum, which is a great upgrade bring back and that is it so far we'll probably end up with some more upgrades or robots in Star Alliance and those are probably going to be our preferred targets ooh Calm Officer Kirby you may play a oh so he's a 3 power human and play fight reap you may play a non Star Alliance artifact upgrade or action card this turn uh, I mean there's so many good ones in Saurian and good ones in Logos too so I am that he's I think he's pretty good here. Red alert is an action. When you play it, if there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, you deal damage to each enemy creature equal to the difference. I feel like there's enough board control in here that probably will be a misfire. Probably won't won't happen. Good archive target. Oh, we have two of those. Hmm. I don't think we need two of those. Okay, science officer Chinkan is interesting. Uh, two power, alien, proximen, and scientist with elusive. And after a player chooses an active house which matches no card in play, steal one. Importantly, you, the controller of Science Officer Chin, can steal the one, uh, whether it's your turn or your opponent's turn, that, that this happens. So getting him out early can be uh, pretty strong. It makes your opponent, you know, effectively have to choose between doing something where they already have stuff on the table 
uh, even if it's not optimal, or letting you steal one. And we have, we saw, we have like lots of good ways to protect him. So he's probably staying on the board. We have two of those. That could be really <laughs> quite devastating. Uh, it's actually pr pretty good because we don't have, I haven't seen a lot of other amber control effects in here, to be honest. That's maybe the one weakness here. We have a capture on Odoak. Uh, we have potential, well, we have steel with information exchange. Uh, and then we have the cost boosting with with uh, ED, uh, but that's it. So getting some steel here is is probably really needed. Three of them. Wow, wow. <laughs> and and I mean, if we have three of these on the board, and we're also doing board control where we're killing our opponent's stuff, so that then they really feel like they need to go for a house that they don't have on the board yet. Th it could be really devastating. All right. Ah, Sensor Chief Garcia gives us a little more Amber Control. She's a 3 power human with Play, Fight, Reap. Keys cost plus 2 during during your opponent's next turn. Really great effect there. Ah, Stealth Mode, so good. Action card with a bonus Amber, and your opponent can't play action cards during their next turn. Uh, whew, that, more control, you know, so I, I love it. Uh, Quintrino Flux is an interesting board control card. You choose a friendly creature and an enemy creature, and you destroy the chosen creatures and each creature with the same power as either of the chosen creatures. Um, so, so, selective board wipe. You do have to choose at least one friendly creature. You can potentially choose one that doesn't share a power with anything, or, you know, one where things are warded so you're not going to lose that much or maybe you know you decide to hit the uh titan guardian so you get the draw off of it or something like that there are lots of good options and lastly we have ooh captain val jericho she is a five power human leader with one armor and during your turn if captain val jericho is in the center of your battle line you may play one card that is not of the active house uh, that center of the battle line can be kind of difficult to manage, so I I wouldn't count on this firing a lot. Although she's just a great uh, creature to have. In in case uh, five power one armor is nice, but if you do manage to get her in the center, that that's really powerful because uh, she fires every turn, and um, she can potentially fire every turn and uh, so that means like if you're on a Saurian turn you can play a Star Alliance card you're on Star Alliance turn you play a Logos card you're on Logos you play a Saurian card that could help you just move through your deck real fast so that is my first deck with her in it I'm pretty excited about seeing how that plays uh, funny enough did we get no upgrades in Star Alliance so that's a little funny but, you know, um, I think between the, the Calm Officer Kirby and the Jericho, the Val Jericho, we have a pretty good chance at, at being able to like pull back a, an upgrade and play it on the same turn. I'm not that worried about it. It seems okay. Uh, yeah, I think Walls is probably not as good here as I've seen him in some other decks, but that's okay. It's still good stuff. Uh, yeah, so that is... Mile K Chemoas or Chemoas seems uh, seems good, seems fun. I'll be excited to see how it works out in practice. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you'll get out and forge some keys.